In this tutorial, we're going to introduce the use of op amps in MicroCamp, how to power op amps, as well as the use of secondary schematic pages in addition to the main schematic page. Let's start a new circuit schematic and choose the op amp. I'll place the op amp in the circuit and I'll use the LF351 model, which is the op amp that we will use commonly in 342. A new window pops up saying that op amp power supplies were added. When we look at the schematic page, we see that a new schematic page has opened up and the values for this were plus 15 and minus 15 volts by default. We can change these to, for example, plus 5 and negative 5 volts as provided by your digital units. The op amp is connected to two power supplies, nodes VC and BE. Let's build a simple inverting op amp circuit with a gain of, let's say, minus two. We'll connect the nodes. Let's put in an input source with a value of zero, and let's call this V sig. Put our good old ground and then connect ground to the rest of the circuit. The reference input will be the positive terminal for the inverting amplifier. So let's connect that to the ground as well and save this file. I'll bring this back to my demo. We'll call this demo demo04 op amps. You can disable the automatic placement of the power supplies by going to preferences and circuit and unchecking automatically add op amp power supplies. We'll keep them for now. When dealing with real op amps, there are a number of parameters that we have to be aware of. These include the gain bandwidth project, the DC voltage gain, and so on that we will study in class. When setting up the simulation though, the important things that you need to plug in are the supply voltage limits. You'll note that VCC, which is the positive supply, VEE, which is a negative supply, VNS, which is the negative voltage swing limit, and VPS, the positive voltage swing limit, are still defined as they were for the plus and minus 15 volt sources. So we will have to manually change these. We'll set VCC to plus 5, VEE to negative 5, and then we need to switch the limits. Uh, the LF351 op amp is not a rail-to-rail -rail op amp. That is, its output voltage does not go from the negative supply to the positive supply. It's typically 1.5 volts to 2 volts away from the supply. So, for example, let's set VNS to negative 3 volts, and let's set the positive supply limit, VPS, to plus 3 volts, and click OK. Let's save and do a simple DC sweep analysis. We will vary Vsig with a maximum of 10 volts, and We'll start the sweep from minus 10 volts and let's do 0.1 volt sweeps. Before we do the DC simulation, let's name our output node. We'll name the output node out and do a DC analysis. We'll sweep V sig. We'll start from negative 10 volts and we'll go to positive 10 volts and we'll use a 0.1 volt step. Let's correct the output voltage. And let's do auto always for the two values, X range and Y range. Note that we get a very oddly shaped voltage graph. Especially below negative 5 volts, we have an odd characteristic. If we were to limit our input voltage to the supply voltages, we'd get a slightly different characteristic, which we would expect. This output saturates at minus 3.6 and plus 3.6 volts, and the gain of this circuit is essentially 2. We can verify the gain by taking a simple slope, the slope of this voltage transfer characteristic is minus 2 volts per volt, which is the gain of our inverting amplifier. 